So our next and final speaker for this section um, is Vina. And Vina studies software engineering and computer hardware at Coventry University. Um, and when she graduated, she joined Talent. And over the last six years, she's risen up the ranks. Um, and she's now a group network and security engineer um, that's currently based within the cybersecurity industry. So she works on mission critical networks to provide 24 seven service for her company um, and to keep the employees and the customers safe from essentially any cyber attacks. Um, and since she started studying um, when she was kind of an undergraduate, she's been passionate about volunteering in STEM, like many of us here today. Um, so she's going to be joining us to speak about that. And it's actually pretty impressive that you have to monitor it 24 seven, because as we said, Every 39 seconds, there's what? A cyber attack. So it's a non-stop job. So yeah, please share your story. Tell us how you do it. Let's welcome Vina. Hi guys, so my name is Vina Kamari. Thank you very much for the introduction, George. Um, you made me sound a lot more glamorous in that introduction than, what, than how I actually feel. <laughs> But no, effectively, I'm here today to share my story, my journey, hopefully inspire you guys to have a little bit of a takeaway. We've heard from some phenomenal speakers all day. So even if not from myself and if cyber is not of interest to you, hopefully there's just a little bit of a takeaway that you can take from something. So meet the speaker. That is I. I am a network and security engineer within the IT and cyber security division within Talent Technology Services. Now that's kind of like a new upcoming department that we've had. Cybersecurity was always outsourced within the company where I was at. And so as soon as someone turned around and said, oh, we're going to build out cybersecurity division, how do you feel about moving there? I was like, that sounds like a new challenge to me. It sounds like a new opportunity. I want to move over. And let's be honest, how often do we hear about cybersecurity, cyber attacks in the news now? It's a hot topic for many companies now. Cybersecurity is pretty much at the forefront of protecting every single company on a global scale. So as soon as I heard that opportunity was there, I was like, I need to leverage this. On the side of that, I'm also part of the Young Rail Professionals. Um, not sure if anyone's heard of the Young Rail Professionals at all. Um, but effectively, we're a not-for-profit organization working across the railway industry to promote, inspire, and develop the railway industry with the next generation of young talent. I've recently just taken on a new role with them as well as a technical officer, so doing something a little bit more related to my role in cyber. So my journey then, that's a very young version of me. Um, so I grew up in Solihull, which is a predominantly white area. So when I went to school, it was, I was only one of a handful of people of colour. I didn't know anything different other than the community that I was raised in and from my family perspective, I didn't know anything different. So from primary school, secondary school, going through to college, that's kind of the upbringing that I had. I chose to study IT as part of my GCSEs because I just really enjoyed the topic. And so I decided to continue this going on through to college. But when I left college, as many of the speakers have said, I didn't get the grades that I wanted. wanted. I finished on a D in maths, which was awful. And I really enjoyed maths. Like I genuinely have such a passion for maths, and I really love it. And yet, I just could not get the grades. So it, you know, sometimes like, you try, and you really try, and it just doesn't deliver. So when I left college, I, I decided to take a gap year. I didn't want to rush, and I think that's important. You don't need to rush any decision. It's not a competition of who gets an apprenticeship scheme first, who gets a grad scheme first, who manages to go to university or whatnot. There's no rush. So I decided to take that one year to think properly, what do I want to do? On one hand, I really enjoy IT, but then I'm battling with the fact that I don't find it enough of a challenge for me to just want to continue for the next three years of my life studying this. So I explored all my options, Worked part-time during that year as well, just so I had a little bit of income, didn't need to solely rely on my parents. And I found a course called Computer Hardware and Software Engineering at Coventry University. Now, this encompassed fundamental engineering maths, computer hardware, software engineering, programming, network engineering, robotics, electronic systems. So it was like a really broad course that touched on many things. And I thought, that sounds like a good opportunity for me to try to figure out exactly what I want to do, and maybe that can help me to, to, to make a, an informed decision for what I want to actually be in the future. 
just going back to the last slide, actually, I think it's important to touch base on the fact that when growing up, I was in a white majority area, and that's just based upon geographical location where I grew up. University was the first time where I was put in an environment where I was like, wow, so much diversity around me. And in Coventry University, we have a mass of international students. I had friends from Nigeria, Kenya, India, Hong Kong, Hong Kong China, Eastern European. It was honestly fantastic to meet all these different people, purely based upon the fact as well that they had gone through different experiences within their own lives. They'd learnt in different ways. They taught me things in different ways. And it's something which I'd never been subject to previously in my life. So then when I was leaving university, I went to all the career fairs that they put on, had a look at all of the stands, saw what graduate schemes and programs were available, and that's where I came across talent. Now, it was almost like doing like a UNO reverse card because from being in a very diverse international setting in university, I'd now moved back into a white male-dominated industry. A lot of senior old people, I remember walking in the doors, and I was the only female graduate on my intake that year, and all of the seniors, all of the, the, the people around me were just white men. That was it. Now, I could have let that deter me, walked away, but I see opportunities like this as a challenge. And when I see things like that, it makes me want to do exactly what I'm doing. I'll share my story, share my experience, so that you guys can keep pushing forwards as well. It's about breaking the barriers, essentially, which is what all of us here are like here to do, all of us speakers. After doing two years of the graduate program across rail network services, I was headhunted to join that new network and security department that Telen were, build, that Telen were building out. And that's kind of effectively what I do now in my day job, which I'll touch on a little bit more in a moment. A couple of accomplishments that I had over the past year. So I was also one of the top five finalists for the IET's Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards with Anna and Aneni, if you guys have met her upstairs on the robotics stand. Um, so it was a really, really privileged experience just to be recognised for all the hard work and commitment that I'd put in over my years in the industry. And then this year, April, I won the Young Rail Professionals Volunteer of the Year Award um, for all of my contributed efforts. So that was chairing up a committee of 14 individuals across the West Midland region, putting on a whole wide variety of events um, of all types. That's like ed &I, careers fairs, workshop, outreach, loads of STEM work. And there's going to be loads of pictures for you guys to see on that in a moment. So a question to throw at you guys as the audience. All these pictures have one thing in common. What do you think a running theme of this picture is? <laughs> that could be one. Any, any buzzwords, anything? Yeah. Internet, internet, anybody else? Cyber. Internet was the word that I'm looking for. So often I think we take for granted exactly like what the internet is. We just know that it's there and we know that it works. And I think that's kind of what fascinated me when I first got into the world of engineering, was realizing that everything just works, but how, how? And so that's where I kind of got my passion for networking. So this is what I do. It's a little bit small, so I don't know if you guys can read it. So what does the network and cybersecurity engineer do? Now, as Joe touched on, as George mentioned, cybersecurity is a massive growing field of importance, especially during COVID-19. We saw more people needing to work remotely at home. More people are now relying on the internet. The demand for technology has really gone through the roof. Everything from smart homes, smart, smart motor, uh, motorways, smart microwaves, smart fridges, smart phones, everything is using the internet. So, what do I do? I look after the corporate network for the company where I work. So that consists of over 30 sites, over 3,000 employees, thousands and thousands of assets. I wouldn't be able to give you the specific figure, but my day job can look anything from sitting behind the desk, doing perhaps a bill of materials for a couple hundred thousand pounds of equipment, looking at network designs, to then moving on and suddenly getting roped into a major P1 incident where I have to drop absolutely everything I'm doing and get all hands on de deck to mi mitigate a risk that's effectively there. So, network monitoring maintenance, the 24 by 7 on call. Now, I'm not sat behind a computer looking 24 7 at what's going on and looking at all these graphs. I just need my phone on me. <laughs> so 24 by 7, 
it, I was on call last week and it's not uncommon for me to get called up at 2 a.m. in the morning. We've had this alert come through and I'll have to log on and have a look at it. 4 a.m. again on the same day, we've had this alert come through. And I could be up for two, three, four hours just trying to look into an issue and see exactly what's going on. Why do we do this? Well, the way that I describe a network is it's almost like a bubble. So if you guys are at school, college, university, you're working, as soon as you connect into that network, either by physical cable or by wireless, you're inside that bubble. Now, you've got to make sure there's no hole in that bubble, because if there is, you leave yourself at risk of being breached. Someone can exfiltrate your data in and out. They can steal your details. They can steal anything. So it's about protecting that. We do that by putting loads of good measures and practices and policies in way, make sure systems, data, it's all up to date and stored correctly. Here are some images of my outreach and volunteering activity. So I do a lot of public speaking, exactly how I'm speaking to you guys today. Ever since I joined university in 2017, I've been a student ambassador. So I've had a real big passion for STEM, doing a lot of public speaking on open days, going out to a lot of schools. And I kind of continued that through into my graduate scheme as well. I built out a work experience program where I brought in a variety of students into the company to send them around into our, into our company to show them exactly what kind of a role you can have in engineering. Now, it wasn't all tech related, because I know someone asked a question before about being in STEM. I sent people to project management courses. I sent people to the design workshops, to the labs, uh, to the finance department to understand that there's more to engineering than just being a tech head effectively. I've done some EDNI events where we've had people talk about their own stories, exactly how we're sharing ours today. I've got involved with uh, debate panels and discussions, um, and yeah, I occasionally go out to have the odd pop-up stand at some stations and whatnot with the young grad professionals, where we really try to do some outreach to the public. Emma, you can probably see yourself in one of the pictures over here. <laughs> but these are some more pictures from the award ceremonies that happened. So the IET Young Women Engineer Awards, which recognised some phenomenal women across the industry, and then also the Young Rail Professional Awards. So, some closing thoughts from myself. Ask plenty of questions. I don't think that there is anything such as a stupid question. I really, truly believe that. And I think sometimes, especially in the, in the environment that, that I'm in, there's not people, you know, I don't work with a lot of women. I don't work with a lot of people of colour. And sometimes I've heard it from the people that I mentor that they feel shy or embarrassed to ask because they don't feel comfortable in the setting they're in. I've somehow managed to just step away from that and just try to put in a cup where I, I think, just ask what I need to ask. It doesn't matter. There's no such thing as a silly question. If someone asks, that's on them. Go to HR, do whatever you need to do, but that's on them. If you're nervous and you find something challenging, you know that you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And to me, I think that's always a win. Always a win. You never know where life could take you. So grasp every single opportunity that you can. You might have situations that you enjoy. You might come out of it, even with something that, you know, you, you decide you don't like the opportunity that you took. You realize it's not for you. But either way, it's a win, because you've not only learned something about yourself, you're able to shape your own future and your own choices then. One that many people have said today, reach out to the people around you. So whether that's past workers, past lecturers and teachers, your co-peers, your friends, mentors and stuff like us guys today, that's exactly what we're here for. For you guys to reach out to us, build a relationship with us, follow us on social platforms and whatnot, and reach out to us whenever you want. My door is always open for a conversation, a chat. I mentor people inside and outside of work as well, just to act as a guidance. I also feel that you know, we have a lack of female empowered mentors within this industry as well, so I'm always passionate to try to help out in that aspect. And share your experience and journey. You guys are sat here today you know, in the audience. Who knows one of you guys could be up here in a couple of years performing, and that could be the start of your journey. You just sitting there right now, and one day you've got a whole mass of A to Z to tell the rest of the world. So your journey starts here. It starts now. Just start sharing your story. So that's it.